The Italian car makers, Lancia, are buying back hundreds of their beta models and scrapping them because of serious rust in the engine mountings. Hello everybody, welcome to number 27. Now, I may speak perfect English, but I am in fact Italian. Here I am celebrating my first birthday in Milan, the city where I was born. As such, it has been heartbreaking to see what has happened to Lancia over the last few years. In 2019, Lancia celebrated the 50th anniversary of its takeover by Fiat. By that stage, Lancia was only selling one eight-year-old car in one country. By 2021, total sales for the whole car company were just 41,000 cars. Lancia wasn't just on life support. Lancia is dead. It has been cryogenically frozen with the hope that it may be revived in the future. So how did we get here? There are three separate historical events that led to Lancia's death. Now you're all thinking that it's all down to rust, but in fact, that is the least significant of all of them. The real reasons that Lancia is dead are much more complex and they're going to surprise you. They revolve around these three things. The first is an unbridled and maybe unwise passion for racing. The second is unreasonably high standards. And the third, and most surprising of all, is Alfa Romeo. Lancia was founded in 1906 by Vincenzo Lancia in Turin. Now surely this man is the very caricature of what we expect a jolly charismatic Italian to look like. Under his stewardship, Lancia developed a reputation for quality and innovation, introducing at that time the first monocoque car. In 1937, tragically, Vincenzo died of a massive heart attack. At just 24 years old, his son Gianni was forced to take over the company. He had the massive challenge just after the war of trying to bring out some new models with very limited funds. At this time, he employed the legendary Vittorio Giano, who had previously been, and who we can see here, with Alfa Romeo, and then later with Gianni himself. Together, they developed the Aurelia. This was the first car to have standard radial tyres, a rear transaxle layout, before Porsche and Ferrari. It had inboard brakes for less unsprung weight and it was the first car with a production V6. At this stage, let's dismiss one inaccuracy. There are voices circling that one of the biggest problems that Lancia had is that after the Second World War, it couldn't get the funds to rebuild and get some modern production lines. The reason for this supposedly is that Gianni Lancia who was running it at the time, had communist sympathies during the war. Therefore, the Americans under the Marshall Plan refused to fund Lancia, unlike the funding that they gave to Fiat and Alfa Romeo. As far as I have been able to tell, there is absolutely no proof or anything to back up this claim. Crucially, this is where we get to the first phase in Lancia's downfall. Gianni's passion for racing skewed his priorities he should have been concentrating on making production more efficient. Instead, he took Lancia into Formula One in 1954 with their D50. Now, this was an incredibly innovative car and it was proved to be very, very quick, if not immediately reliable. However, Formula One then and now was an incredibly expensive thing to get into and the funds soon started draining Lancia's finances. By 1955, one of their drivers, Ascari, was killed actually in testing a Ferrari, and Gianni decided he had to pull out. All of Lancia's Formula One assets were sold on to Ferrari, who then frustratingly went on to win the next Formula One championship with that very car, with the D50 in 1956. The Formula One adventure weighed really heavy on Lancia's balance sheet, and despite launching such iconic cars as the Aurelia Coupe and Spider, the Flamilia Luxury Saloon and Coupe, Lancia's losses piled up, 
and Gianni sold the company to the Pezzenti family in 1956. Carlo Pezzenti was an Italian industrialist with a vast cement production empire. He was very, very passionate about cars and about Lancia, and he did his best to try and turn the company around. Through the 1950s and 60s, Lancia made some of the best cars in Italy. It made unconventional gems like the Appia, the Flaminia, the Flavia and the Fulvia. Not all of them pretty cars, but painstakingly built and designed. Now we get to the second element of Lancia's downfall. At our standard, the cars were very, very difficult to improve on. But this constant commitment to quality started to drag the company down. By the end of the 1960s, their production line was aging. The models didn't share very many parts in common and everything was painstakingly put together by hand. As a result, the, the costs of production were increasing. At the same time, sales were falling. Antonio Fessia was then their head of design and tech. He was a brilliant engineer, but he didn't really understand the commercial imperatives that a company like this faced. So he often clashed with the managing directors that Presenti tried to bring in to modernize and make Lancia more efficient. The losses mounted up, and in 1969, Pezzenti had had enough of bailing Lancia out and sold it on to Fiat. Initially, under Fiat ownership, Lancia did have some notable successes. The Stratos won the 1974-75 and 76 Rally Championship, and the Nord 37 was the last two-wheel drive car to win the World Championship. The Delta, the new car, sold well, and also won another string of championships. At the end of the 70s, the Beta was launched. Technically, it was brilliant. Four disc brakes, five-speed gearbox, independent suspension all round, it drove very well and journalists loved it. One version had the craziest dash that you're ever gonna see. But, heartbreakingly, there was a design flaw which meant that the cross member at the front collected water in two pockets. These rusted out and the subframe holding the engine detached from the car. Lancia dealers are trading old models for new, obligingly telling disgruntled customers that they'll buy back their rusted beta saloons, worth only scrap to the company, and offering generous part exchange terms for the new models. Without doubt, this did cause Lancia huge harm. They were, after all, forced to leave the UK market. But for me, this isn't the most significant problem. After all, in the early 2000s, Mercedes had a terrible problem with rust. And yet, they managed to come out of it eventually pretty much unscathed. They had to deal with it, yes, but their reputation hasn't suffered long term. No, for me, what really killed off Lancia was Alfa Romeo. In the 80s and 90s, particularly after the first generation Delta, Lancia made a series of dull, uncompetitive cars. The Tima wasn't too bad, my dad owned one at the time, and I remember quite liking it, and I have a strange hankering after the Kappa, even though that too was pretty much a failure. But the Dedra, the Libra, the Thesis, the awful Series 2 Delta were all pretty dire. Particularly cruel was the replacement for the Lancia Delta Integrale, which in the Series 2 was the Delta HPE, a soggy two-wheel drive, torque steering marshmallow. The Series 2 itself was replaced by the biggest abomination yet, the Series 3 Delta. Was Fiat intentionally sabotaging Lancia? No. It's just that Fiat decided at the time that Alfa Romeo had more brand recognition outside of Italy and therefore more potential. As a result, they decided to concentrate on Alfa at Lancia's expense. The earliest example of this is in the 1990s when Fiat removed the funds, essentially stole Lancia's phenomenally successful rally program and moved that instead into Alfa Romeo's saloon car racing efforts with the new 155. 
The same thing happened in terms of the product range. Now that Fiat had decided that Alpha was the priority, very little effort was put into the design of new launchers. As a result, each new model that came out was less appealing than the one that it replaced. This all came to a head when Lancia and Chrysler joined forces in 2011. Lancia was given a series of rebadged, outdated Chrysler models. Unsurprisingly, this new effort to push Lancia failed. From initial production of 99,000 units in 2011, by 2014, Lancia had gone down to just 72,000. Now, the situation is even more dire. Just 41,000 Lanchas sold. So for me, in recent history, this is by far the biggest contributor to Lancha's downfall. Fiat couldn't handle the number of brands that it had. As a result, it concentrated on Alfa Romeo and left Lancha to fester and die. Now recently, Stellantis has been making noises of a Lancha relaunch in 2025, and I dearly hope this is a success. But unfortunately, even if it is, I think the only thing that really survives of Lancia now is the badge. So to recap, for me, it is these three elements that really killed Lancia. First of all, there was the fact that Jani miscalculated, put too many resources into the racing, and that meant that the company was taken out of family hands. Once that had happened, there was still the ongoing issue of a sort of decentralized, inefficient production process, and just an a total concentration on quality at the expense of everything else. This was the second issue. They couldn't make money because their cars were almost too good. The third thing, and for me almost the most important, once Fiat had taken over, is that when Fiat saw that they couldn't manage all their brands, they concentrated on Alfa Romeo, meaning that Lancia got left behind. It is really sad to see what has happened to this once glorious mark. We can at least still celebrate some of the older models, and indeed I myself am looking for a good Fulvia. Thank you all so much for watching. Please do comment, let me know what you think. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, if you've enjoyed this video, it really helps the channel. If there's other subjects that you would like me to do videos like this on, then please let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much, and I really look forward to seeing you for the next one.